coming up on Ag Week TV, showcasing the region's growing dairy industry to the world. I sit down with two men whose families were key to growing the region's ag equipment business. This is Kevin Walden. We'll tell you how local field work has turned into mission work for this community and a local church. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Shauna Olson. The World Dairy Expo has been the premier show for the industry for the past 50 years. And with the rapid growth of the dairy business in South Dakota, it's the perfect place to promote the state's dairy industry. Ag Week TV's Michelle Rook has more. South Dakota had a huge presence at the 50th anniversary celebration of the World Dairy Expo here in Madison, Wisconsin. For Amy Freiberg of Gayville, this was the 25th year she's marketed South Dakota hay at the Expo. It's just a really good opportunity to interact with the dairy people, and in the vast majority of the hay that we raise goes into the dairy market. South Dakota Ag businesses also showcase some innovative products like hydroponic feed. And with small grains like barley, wheat, or oats, we can now grow from seed to feed in six days. The state's dairy cattle were also promoted. Victory Farms placed high in the National Jersey Show. So Nadine, she got first junior in her aged cow class and then she got sixth in the class for open. The State Department of Ag was also back recruiting dairy farms and processors. We have cows that have been permitted but I have no home for the milk at the moment. So we're actively trying to talk to people about bringing in additional processing into our state. And Skaggs credits Expo for helping South Dakota grow cow numbers from 80,000 to 118,000 today. In Madison, I'm Michelle Rook reporting for Ag Week. The World Dairy Expo's 50th anniversary celebration hosted a record 75,000 people, including 3,000 international guests and 850 exhibitors. Some farmers in Cooperstown, North Dakota, took time from their work this week to work. They interrupted their own combining to help the hungry. As Kevin Wallavind reports, Trinity Lutheran turned a donated piece of land into a mission field with the help of ag businesses and the community. Austin, are you eating? Not your ordinary place. Ketchup is frozen. For a fall picnic of burgers on the grill. A soybean field near Cooperstown, North Dakota. Are the beans wet from that little mist last night? Volunteer farmers, members of Trinity Lutheran here. We're still going to fly even if it's a little wet, we're going to take them. Who climbed into their combines, red and green, to do mission work, the rural way. <laughs> Dropping their headers, starting the fall harvest like no other in the region. Well, this kind of fell on our lap and it's everything and more that we ever hoped it could be. After a landowner gave the church 95 acres, the farmers in the church got one gospel of an idea. Share the wealth with those without. Absolutely every dollar of the grain that it will be brought to the elevators today will be for uh, hunger. They turn this field into a patchwork of giving. It uh, turned into be a really big thing, so nice to be a part of. Come on, happy campers. The church today thanked seed and fertilizer dealers who donated. Farmers who brought their tractors, combines, and fuel, all to bring in the bounty. In the last four years, Trinity has harvested enough corn and soybeans to donate over $135,000 to those who help feed the hungry, local and regional food shelves, and church-related feeding programs globally. It's not just a church thing here. It's a community-based thing, and people have bought into this. It all started with just dirt. Seed, rain, sunshine, and a lesson from those who know the land well, who can add compassion now to their rural resume. And with such good yields expected, the Trinity growers could bring in another $40,000 from this harvest. There are a few big names in the region's ag history that helped launch some famous brands. Melro Bobcats and Steiger Tractors came to be known around the world for their innovations. Ag Week TV's Mikkel Pate sat down with Douglas Steiger and Howard Dahl 
whose families played key roles in the development of those machines and the region's ag industry. The Steiger story begins in northwest Minnesota in the 1950s. John Steiger was farming with his sons, Morris and Doug. They were doing well until heavy rains in 56 and 57 led them to do more custom work with a crawler and a tractor. We decided if we could build a, a large tractor that uh, my dad could do all the uh, fall work with all alone, then we could go out for custom income. And that's really one of the big reasons why we built the first tractor. The Steiger brothers built their first tractor out of equipment from the Iron Range. It's on display out here at Bonanzaville in West Fargo. Even though we built one for ourselves, what was in the back of my mind? Did I ever dream that we were gonna go beyond that? I don't know. But I did seem to want a color that stood out. From these humble beginnings, Steiger ultimately went worldwide due to the revolutionary idea of the articulated four-wheel drive tractor. But the company really went to the next level in 1970 when the Melro family invested in it. Howard Dahl says his uncle Les Melro saw the value. There would not, would not have been a bobcat without Les saying that's the future. There would not have been what we see as a Steiger tractor, the case New Holland tractor today, without Les saying that's the future. But as the farm economy suffered in the 1980s, so did the ag equipment business. Both the Steiger and Melro companies have been through many ownership changes since, but both remain important names in ag history, despite what Doug's high school teacher wrote in his yearbook. You of all my students are the most unlikely to succeed. He did that on purpose, didn't he? Yep. To motivate you. Challenge. Yep. Wow. Steiger chose to use those words as inspiration, and at 83, he can take pride in a number of companies. In Thief River Falls, Minnesota, this is Mikkel Pates for Ag Week TV. Ag equipment still runs in the family. Howard Dahl is president and CEO of Amity Technology of Fargo, which makes and sells tillage and seeding equipment. If you're interested in sunflowers or other oil seeds, keep watching. If you're interested in bees, keep watching. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgerwood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called the Cornstalk Guide. It helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. By the lake, it's another chilly morning. I hear the fish are really biting, but so is that wind chill, so it might be a good Don't let cold weather keep you indoors. Trust Under Armour from Home of Economy. Under Armour men and women's base layers are engineered to trap body warmth, wick away moisture, and keep you warm and dry while you're active outdoors. Stay comfortable all day long with Under Armour base layers, available at the guaranteed lowest price. Home of economy, where your dollar buys more. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living, it's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, held bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment, it's as strong as your family's trust, as honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins, with proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you, no matter what storms come your way. The harvest will always be protected, so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say, there's nothing standard about Superior. Advanced Grain Handling is the original dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency, drying all types of grains, including seed grain. A family-owned company, Advanced Grain Handling, has licensed and trained service techs on hand whose number one focus is service. They also sell service monitoring systems, do millwright work, and have a licensed electrical shop. Contact Chad today at Advanced Grain Handling Systems, 701-788-8927.
NDSU researchers are hoping to fight fire with fire, or more accurately, fight fungus with fungus. As Jonathan Knutson explains, they're using bees to fight sclerotinia. It's a disease that hurts yield and quality in sunflowers, soybeans, canola, and many other crops. In simple words, we are using bees to manage head rot of sunflower. Head rot of sunflower is caused by white mold fungi. White mold is caused by a fungus which can devastate crops, including soybeans and canola. But fungicides usually don't work well against it. So we are trying to kill a pathogenic fungi with a biological fungi. This is still in a research uh, phase. If we get good results for two good seasons, then it will be for growers to evaluate. So scientists are testing the use of bees to spread an organic compound, a good fungus, on crops during pollination. It inhibits the bad fungus working with nature instead of against it. This would be a very wonderful option for us to manage uh, diseases. If it this works, we can take on to other uh, crops like white mold on canola, white mold on soybeans. It's an interesting, important project and one I'll continue to watch. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knutson. The research was delayed by the wet harvest, but he says based on his analysis so far, it seems to be working. This week's Crop Stop takes us to Forest River in Northeast North Dakota. We found them filling wheat bins. Jeremy Pask says the harvest is a mixed bag in that area because of heavy rains in parts of the area all season. The uh, crop was pretty good around here? In places. Yeah, pretty good quality, do you think? Uh, it depends on, again, in places it was, and in most places it really wasn't because we had a lot of flood, drowned out too much water. The corn harvest is just getting started, and Pask says the crop is looking pretty good. Up next on Ag Week TV, how will the weather hold out for harvest? And later, the region's swine industry gets a major boost. This week on Northland Outdoors, the wide open flatlands of western Minnesota. Today it's one of the richest and most fertile stretches of farmland in North America. But there was a time when this was native prairie and home to the clever and kooky prairie chicken. Now, thanks to the efforts of many, the prairie chicken is on the comeback. And we'll head to the north shore of Lake Superior to witness an annual migration like few others. That's all this week on Northland Outdoors. Advanced Biofuel for America's diesel engines is clean burning and made from renewable sources like soybean oil. Biodiesel fuel works in any diesel engine, reducing emissions, helping us breathe cleaner air. Biodiesel adds value to North Dakota soybeans, creating jobs, improving the environment, increasing our energy independence. Biodiesel, it starts with soybeans, it's fueling America. Time to demand more. With microessentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, only microessentials combines four vital nutrients into one powerful granule, ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. The innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Microessentials, get more from every acre. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Pronovost Snowblowers, just what you need. Lots of standard features and 33 models available and the colors you want. The high level of manufacturing and performance standards assures you of owning the superior, most advanced equipment. Snowway is the leader in designing snowplows with a big appetite for snow. Whether you're seeking a snowplow for your truck, skid steer, or UIV, Snowway has a highly engineered snowplow to fit your needs with a variety of options. 
for Pronovo snowblowers or Snowway snowplows. Contact your nearest dealer or North Country Marketing. Ag Week TV weather is brought to you by Kaler Farms. Weather portion of Ag Week now continues about continued rainy weather through the fall season. And if it keeps up right on up into winter freeze up, what does that mean for next year? Are we starting off really wet one more time next year? There is a huge Pacific Coast storm system. I'll have some details on that. And that's ongoing this weekend into early part of the week. That may eventually have an impact on our whole outlook for uh, for the next couple of weeks. Meanwhile, more late fall rain is expected in parts of the northern plains. Uh, this week, not too much, but some rain next week looking a little bit, perhaps a chance for some significant moisture once again. And overall, the next couple of weeks, maybe the rest of October looking a little bit above average for the month of October. A powerful jet stream slamming into the northwest coast this weekend is responsible for all the rainfall out there. And this jet will actually work its way this week out into the northern plains where it will bring in weakening form at least a chance of some showers uh, midweek and beyond. But uh, the really phenomenal rainfall is in the Pacific Northwest area. The other thing that this uh, jet stream is doing, all this jet stream energy as it begins to build northward midweek will start to create some very mild weather which will be drawn northward. Not that it's going to be crazy warm in the northern plains or upper Midwest, but a little bit above average. Eastern part of the Corn Belt, uh, not so much because of a dip in the jet stream. The eastern seaboard looks very warm and the plains looks a little on the warm side. And although it may cool down a bit through the weekend, I don't expect it to be crazy warm. I think it will overall be warmer than average. Why all the rain in the northwest? This huge weather system is moving across the northern Pacific Ocean, which is temperature wise much warmer than average right now. Some spots three, four, five degrees above average, which adds moisture and humidity to the air. So a lot of this area along the west coast will pick up lower elevations, maybe two to five inches and as much as a couple of feet of rain in the mountains. That's fairly phenomenal. Temperature wise this week, uh, generally above average across much of the United States, the exception being the Northwest and the Northern Rockies. Nowhere is it really going to be particularly cool. As far as precip precipitation goes, there's the Pacific Northwest storm, plenty of rain, some higher elevation snows, but it's mostly rain. Dry weather in the Southern Rockies, another round of uh, tropical moisture in the Southeast, hopefully not hurricanes and rain showers here and there in the northern plains, but nothing too spectacular. Next week, though, I think things will change just a little bit as we get into the second week, as I do expect some rain and snow to break out. Probably snow in the northern Rockies may be significant. Dry areas will be south Texas, south Florida, more rain in the southeast, but we are also looking at some rainfall, maybe a little more than we'd like across the northern plains. So the overall outlook then becomes wet but still mild. More rain for the northern plains, no sign of serious cold yet maybe winter will change things if you get right down to it what's a farmer's job well farmer's job is to feed people farmers collectively our job is to feed the world at peterson farm seed we get to have a, a little bit bigger picture right in our region we get to help those farmers that we work with increase their productivity increase the yields that they get on their farms and as a result uh, more people can eat When the water's high and your yields are low Cause your fields have no place for water to flow Just one call takes care of it all Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. 
United Lease and Finance has been doing business since 1987, a full-service lease company handling lease transactions from inception to close. United Lease and Finance understands the needs of their clients and are familiar with the business they work with. With leasing, you get flexible payment plans, improved cash flow, great rates, easy terms, and leasing does not tie up your credit. Contact Roger, Troy, or Dale today and let them show you how you can lower your cost per acre at 1-800-550-1827. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. A new era is in the making in the hog industry with the opening of the new Swine Education and Research Facility at South Dakota State University. The state-of-the-art facility will support applied teaching and swine research efforts for the state and region. AgWeek TV's Michelle Rook was at the facility's dedication and gives us a tour. The teaching and cutting-edge research conducted here at the new swine unit at South Dakota State University will greatly advance the pork industry. The $7.4 million project includes a sow-intensive research classroom and live viewing area. We have both gestation pens and gestation crates, a bar room, semen processing, a physiology room, uh, two 24-crate farrowing rooms, and then a surgery room. Next is a wean-to-finish unit. Two of the rooms are set aside for an intensive nutrition work, and the other two rooms are for ag engineering. Third is an off-site 1,200-head commercial wean-to-finish barn, all to train students and provide key research. We're all trying to get some research out that will help improve and, and create efficiencies within our own systems at home. This unit allows students to be better prepared, better trained, and better aligned to come back to the farm or allied industries. At the dedication, SDSU President Barry Dunn told supporters that adds value to both swine and grain production. It is economic development, it's value added agriculture at its very best and we can do it in a safe, environmentally sound way. Public education is also promoted through the live observation area. We need to de demystify it for uh, policymakers and consumers so we have uh, the ability to walk people through this facility to see how well we take care of pigs in a modern facility. In Brookings, I'm Michelle Rook reporting for Ag Week. Flax grows best in relatively cool summer weather, which explains why North Dakota leads the nation and Canada leads the world in flax production. But the fiber in the plant stems of flax is tough and decomposes slowly in the soil so farmers in Canada often burn it. Now a Canadian professor is researching ways to reduce the difficulty of handling flax straw, which could encourage more farmers to grow the crop. Survey after survey of um, Canadian growers, when they ask them why, why don't you grow more flax, they say it's because of the straw management problem. So finding a use for those uh, linseed stems would benefit linseed farmers as well. Flax comes in two main types, seed and fiber. Canadian and U.S. producers focus on the seed. His hope is for farmers to see a profit from the straw within 10 years. Ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll meet some farmers out in the field nurturing a very important crop. for the latest news in agriculture, AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable, trusted, AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. Helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains 
a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. This week on Northland Outdoors, the wide open flatlands of western Minnesota. Today it's one of the richest and most fertile stretches of farmland in North America. But there was a time when this was native prairie and home to the clever and kooky prairie chicken. Now, thanks to the efforts of many, the prairie chicken is on the comeback. And we'll head to the north shore of Lake Superior to witness an annual migration like few others. That's all this week on Northland Outdoors. Dig, lay, and bury drain tile all in one pass with the Crary Tile Pro Plow. The Crary Tile Pro Plow lays tile up to 7 feet deep with boot sizes of 4 to 12 inches. Advantages of installing drain tile to your field provides increased overall yield, improved soil moisture levels, and control soil erosion. It pays to tile with a Crary Tile Pro. To locate a dealer near you, visit www.crarytilepro.com. Farmers are wrapping up their busiest time of year, but for many, raising a different kind of crop is a year-round job. Michael Pates found some who take their minds off the stress of the field by working with kids on the field. Rufus, here we are at Steele, North Dakota, where I see a couple of uh, ranchers out in the field. Let's stop and see if they'll talk to us about one of the most important crops that we grow out here. We brought our fifth and sixth graders down, so uh, we Saturdays we get to take the young kids out uh, and play football. They get excited about that, that we're on the road. So um, our high school kids played last night at home, so it. Uh, it definitely gives the guy a little bit of a break from at home and it's fun. So it's a break from everything that's going on all the time and just a little something to concentrate on. It's fun being with the kids. I mean, they, they don't care if the markets are up or down. They just, they just care about coming out, having a little bit of fun and being with their friends and hanging out. And we get to be a part of it. Everybody's talking about how bad the prices are and this and that. Um, so it does, it gives a guy a nice break from getting away from it. It gets your mind off things and, and uh, it's just, it, it's a nice, it's a nice add to what we do. Right. It's good to raise kids on the farm because they learn the value of hard work. Like my son learned how to work in the field this year, you know, he's, he's, he's young, but he's learned that, yeah, you have to go out and work hard to make the crop come in. So, you know, he's, he's learning the value of hard work and he's only 11. I help coach the little fifth and sixth graders. They like it, you know, seeing a bigger, older kid in the high school, you know going on the field and stuff like that kind of respect me. It's fun to watch them kids grow and, and do what they're doing and you know that that's it's very rewarding. So while it's important for us to look at today's crop and cattle prices it's really more important for us to think about the future and how to keep our families together. For Ag Week TV this is Michael Pates at Steel North Dakota. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.